Whose fault is it? Everybody wants to know. Vsauce on Nasty. That's right, our streak was broken last week. I've been trying to say every week, uh, Christ is risen, of course, because that's how we greet each other in the Paschal season, uh, in a different language, and didn't realize until after this, the la yes, last episode was published that I forgot to say it. So, I greet you with Christ is risen, indeed he is risen, on this very last Sunday of Pascha. Being the last Sunday of the Paschal season, we read the Gospel of the Blind Man in which our Lord and his disciples come upon this man who has been blind since birth. And so the disciples start wondering why this has been the case. Was it something he did? Or maybe even his parents? And the reason why they're starting to contemplate of how this sin works is because they're just coming from watching Christ heal the paralytic, in which our Lord said, You're healed, sin no more. And so the disciples are correlating perhaps this man became paralyzed or wasn't able to walk because of some sin he created. But now they happen to be a, run into this man who's been blind his whole life. So what they're asking him is, how does this work? There's, he can't have been born blind because of his sin because, well, you can't sin before you're born. But yet, we also, could it be his parents, but that doesn't make sense either, Lord, because we don't suffer as a consequence of other people's sins. We don't inherit the sins of our parents or suffer consequences of them. And so what could be the case here? Why could this man be born blind, and how does it correlate to sin? Please tell us. And so, hearing these questions, the Lord answers, Neither this man nor his parents sin, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. So now what we have to understand here is God didn't make this person blind just so he could perform a miracle or so he could show off and do some kind of work. But rather, it's a, this miracle taking place is a consequence of already what has taken place of this man being born blind and a part of this fallen world. And here we have something that we tend to struggle with a lot. is a question of why, who, where. We need to know the source of everything, especially things that don't make sense to us or, or things that we're just not pleased with. Why should this man be born blind? Why should the paralytic have suffered the way he did? Why is anything happening for the reason that they're happening? And this is something we constantly hunger after. I mean, you could even take our current situation that we're in, where we want to know why this is taking place. Why is God allowing this to happen? Is it because of some sins of a, of a group? Is it some kind of individual person? What could it be that this is taking place? And who, who can we blame? Who can we point to? And who can we find answers from? So although we have these questions from time to time, and even may be tempted to satisfy and find the exact answer for all of these uh, questions we have that arise in our hearts, we have to realize that we live in a broken world, a sinful and broken world. And why do we have all these catastrophes, these great sufferings, bodily illness, and all this pain? And if we constantly focus on that, we're going to be missing out on the greater mysteries of God that are taking place and that the works of God are being revealed even still, even through this brokenness in which we live in. The very first thing that this blind man saw for the first time in his life was light, the capital L, Christ himself when he first opened up his eyes. And this is the kind of God we have. Someone who suffers with us and is looking out for us, even in the midst of all this darkness in the world. So maybe instead of asking these questions of why, who, what, and where can I put all the blame for these things, we can look towards the end of this gospel. And we could ask questions like, 
Do you believe in the Son of God? Who is he that I may believe? And through these questions, perhaps we will now enter on a path of light in which our spiritual eyes will be opened and we can truly see the works of God within our lives. And our cares will then shift from the chaos within our lives into the peace and the glory of our Lord. Whoa.